Welcome to day two of the Liebscher and Brock back challenge. We're here to help you get rid of your back pain. If you haven't seen our day one video yet, please click the link below to get started. Our first exercise for today starts on the floor. Grab your mat or perhaps find a soft piece of carpet and position yourself on all fours. Begin by slowly rounding your back like so, and then change to this hollow back position. Repeat these moves again slowly, and when you return to the round back, stay in this position, but slowly move your pelvis towards the floor. Use your arms for support, and really let your groin drop into this deep stretch. If you're struggling to keep your arms straight, then you can get into this easier position closer to the floor. If that's still too much for you, then you can place your upper body on a sofa or armchair and let your hips drop this way. As you continue to do these stretches, you'll continue to build your arm and shoulder strength and eventually won't have any troubles with these routines. We want to place our feet so that the tips of our toes are pressed against the floor and our heels are pointing upwards. You should then start to feel this deeper stretch and perhaps you can even let your hips drop a little further. This is a really important exercise for your back pain because like yesterday, we're in the reverse sitting position. Instead of being hunched over, we're hyperextending our hips and that's what really releases the tension from our backs. You should also start to feel this stretch, not only in the back, but also in the groin, the buttocks, and the inside of the thigh. Let yourself drop deeper and deeper, breathing calmly, and perhaps drop your chin down by a millimeter to help stretch the spine a little more. Go deeper, deeper, deeper. And if you're up on your arms like this, Try to pull your shoulder back or down a little if you have the strength. But don't worry if you can't do this yet, you'll build up enough strength soon. it only take one or two weeks. Now leave the stretch slowly and return to all fours. Now, for the next exercise, we'll begin using a chair. So, you want to make sure you're sitting kind of in the middle of the seat, not so far back, but not so far forwards you slide off, right? Then place your hands on your knees, keeping your back straight, and then slowly let your upper body drop forwards. This is similar to one of our standing exercises yesterday, but this time just sitting. Let your hands pull your body further forwards until they reach your feet and let gravity do the rest. Now, you should feel this stretch in your lower back, but also down both sides of the spine as this particular stretch begins to relax any matted fascia or knotted muscles. Once your hands have reached your feet, try to keep pulling yourself further forwards. Perhaps you can run your hands a little further past your feet. Make sure you're continuing to breathe nice and calmly. Maybe you can even mentally give your back some encouragement to go deeper. Go on. Give in a little more. There is always much tension here in the back, for example, when you go to a masseuse and they tell you that everything is so tense in your back. This is because the muscles in the front of our torso have shortened due to that seated position. Make sure you're aware of your breathing because when you exhale, our bodies tend to relax and let go just a little more. Continue to slowly inhale and go deeper with each exhale And then after two minutes, slowly run your hands back towards you until you're back in the upright seated position. 
but be careful. We don't want to damage our backs in any way. Moving on to our third exercise of today's back care routine, we're going to stay seated on the chair, but we'll position ourselves slightly back so that you can hook your legs behind the front chair legs, which allows the lower body to stay somewhat fixed. Let's begin. Twist your upper body to the left, grabbing the top corner of the backrest with your left hand, and then follow with your right hand. Now, we want to keep trying to twist our upper body to the left so that we feel that stretch down our spines. This move is important because it covers our front, back, left, and right, and this rotation is incredibly valuable for the spine as it allows our inner vertebral discs to be fully squeezed and stretched while turning, so that when we return to a central position, our discs can soak up fresh nutrients, leading to a healthier spine. So now you keep trying to achieve a deeper stretch by increasing the rotation. Your hooked feet make sure that you can't rotate your pelvis and that the increased rotation resulting from this has a greater effect on your lower back. As you continue to turn, you could also move your hands a few millimeters more to get an even deeper stretch. Make sure that you're continuing to breathe nicely and keep your feet flat against the floor. You want to really enjoy the stretch because your back loves it. We rarely move our bodies in this way in everyday life. In the end, these routines always center on eliminating the cause of your back pain with movements that occur far too little in everyday life and also counteract one-sided actions. Keep turning and exerting yourself a little more, then slowly release just a little before going back into the stretch. Although you might do this naturally during these more extreme stretches. Now, we're going to slowly return to our original position and perform this same exercise on the other side. Let's get into it right away. With your right hand, grab the right corner of the chair, followed by your left hand, and then turn in the opposite direction. You may notice that my voice is also a little strained. That's because when you do these stretches properly and intensely, You'll exert yourself just a little more, but it's highly effective and totally worth it. You'll notice that after these seven days, you'll have a completely different feeling. Keep twisting your upper body, slowly breathing in, and then, with each exhale, turning more and more. Keep at it. Just picture how your inner vertebral discs are being squeezed out, just like a sponge full of water, and all that metabolic waste that's accumulated due to long, inactive periods is just disappearing. Then, when we release from this stretch, the discs suck up all those good nutrients again. It's really a feast for your spines. Okay, we're getting there now. Turn just a little more. More, more, more. Put in that extra effort for the last few seconds, making sure to keep your breathing steady and staying under a 10 on your pain scale. Inhale. Exhale. Turn a little more, and then slowly we return to our normal position. The emphasis on slow. Let's just give ourselves a little shakeout and free our bodies from any remaining tensions. And now we've arrived at our last exercise for today using our back hero, or if you don't have this to hand yet, 
you could use a pile of books. So you'll see I've already chosen the second height option here. And I'm going to begin by placing this stack just under the sacrum. Then, when comfortable, straighten your legs and relax. I love this because you're lying down and stretching and just allowing gravity to do all the work. It's just nice and easy. By the way, if you'd like more information on our back hero, you can click the link appearing here on your screens now. So, what we're doing now on the back hero, or our stack of books, is we're simply trying to relax. That's it. Letting go of the tension or stress. And when the stack is high enough, we're giving our spine a bigger stretch and more time to replenish. You'll also feel this pulling in the back again. Many of us think that if we do an exercise that pulls in the back or triggers the pain we want to get rid of, then we shouldn't do the exercise. But this is a widespread mistake. If you trigger back pain during an exercise, then it's actually showing you that the exercise you're doing is the right one. Because when we're stretching the muscles in areas that need attention, we're bringing added flexibility and relaxation with these exercises. And then your back pain will be gone. And your inner vertebral discs will be much less stressed. All of these things happen passively when you simply just rest in this position for a while. Again, focus on your breathing. Slowly inhale. Exhale. And then we're coming out of the stretch. Lift your feet, bend your knees, and slowly remove the back hero or stack books. And then it's time for our daily test. Make sure you're standing in the same position as the first photo you took. Place your hands on your buttocks and stretch your back nicely like so and get your friend or partner to take a new photo so that you can continue to monitor your progress over the next few days. What do you see? Has anything changed since yesterday? Make a note. Then slowly leave this position. And that's it. We're done with day two. Well done and stick with it. I'll be looking forward to seeing you all back here again tomorrow for day three of our back challenge. Remember, we want to make these exercises part of your routine so that we can completely eliminate your back pain. Oh, and don't forget, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking right here and you'll discover even more pain relieving exercises. See you tomorrow.